learn how to create a cleaner, more professional lasered project with this masking tutorial. In almost all our videos where we cut parts on our lasers, you'll see that we mask our materials. That means we apply a paper adhesive sheet to the surface. Honestly, I don't see anyone else talking about this, so we thought we'd make a video about it. I'm going to go over why we started doing this, some information about masking including some tips we've learned over the years, and finally I'll show a side-by-side -side laser cutting and engraving results comparison using different materials with and without a paper mask applied. Masking on materials is something we sort of stumbled upon ourselves. I'm sure we didn't invent this process, but like most things when you're a business owner, you have to figure out a solution for yourself, and there was nobody there to help us. A little background first. We used to laser cut wood, acrylic, and some other materials that needed to get UV printed, but we needed to find a way to keep the surfaces completely clean of any burn marks. We had experience cutting cast acrylic, which came with its own paper mask, but found that in most cases it was very difficult to remove the paper after it was laser cut. We'd also already been using masking tapes for stickers and decals we were making and knew they came with different levels of tackiness. So we thought we'd try using the mask we already had to see what happened as a starting point. Anyway, it took a little testing to find the right mask and the best way to apply it, but in the end it worked so well we pretty much started masking almost everything we put in the lasers. These masking tapes, or application tapes as they are called in the industry, are pretty standard stuff used for sign making. There are two types of app tape, paper and a clear plastic. For laser cutting purposes, we're only going to talk about the paper type. You don't want to use the clear plastic type. I think it's made out of polypropylene, so cutting that is a sort of a laser no-no. Applying this tape can be done by hand. Depending on the size of the piece, you'll probably need a squeegee to get the mask to bond with the surface. With something small, as shown here, you can get away with just smoothing it down with your hand. Applying by hand is fine for small parts or one-off projects. However, doing this by hand is just not practical for larger sheets of material, especially if you're doing any kind of volume. We mostly apply our application tape using a laminator. You can just feed sheet after sheet through, and it lays the mask down and squeegees it flat all in one pass. Application tapes come in rolls of varying lengths and widths. They also come in different levels of tackiness. In our experience, you need at least a medium to high tack tape. If the tackiness isn't strong enough, it will start a lift creating an air gap between the mask and the material, and that's not good for lasering. Too tacky, and you might have trouble removing it later. The one we currently use that seems to work good across a wide range of materials will be listed in the description below. When removing the application tape from parts after lasering, it's sometimes a little difficult to get the tape started. This is especially true if you don't have long fingernails. A trick I learned is that once you have a piece of used app tape, you can use this to start peeling the next piece. Then you take the new piece and use that to start the next piece, and so on and so forth. This method works great if you have a lot of the same size parts. You want to laser cut the mask material fairly soon after applying it. I'd say within a day or so. If left on too long, like weeks or months, it can begin to really bond to the material and be more difficult to remove later. For the comparison, I vector cut a design out of 8th inch Baltic birch, quarter inch MDF, and 8th inch acrylic, where one piece of each material was masked and one was left unmasked. I also engraved a design on wood and acrylic where one piece of each material was masked and one was left unmasked. I blew the dust off the engraved acrylic pieces. You can see with the masks on, there wasn't a huge difference in the look between the wood pieces. It was obvious though how bad the unmasked acrylic piece looked. Once all the masked pieces were peeled, the differences became more apparent. 
you can also see how bad the burning gets on the back of the pieces. So even if you are okay with the light burning on the top surface, you might want to at least mask the back side of your material if it will be used in a manner where it will be visible. You can see with the engraved pieces, the unmasked acrylic piece still looks like hell even after blowing it off. Wiping with a microfiber towel got some of the surface hazing off. Using a little Windex helped a little more, but it's still difficult to get all that surface hazing off and you'll end up with light scratches on the surface. After peeling the wood piece, the design looked really clean. There's still not a huge difference between the mask and unmasked pieces. However, the differences you do see would be more pronounced the deeper the engraving went. In other words, the more burning on the surface, the more residue that would be left behind. This would also matter more depending on the wood being used. The more of an MDF core your material has, the more sticky residue that will be left behind. Finally, the master acrylic piece was peeled and as expected, it's about as clean a finish as you can ask for. Before the mask was peeled off, if I had wanted to, I could have run some acrylic paints into the engraving to add some color to the design. The mask would completely protect the surface from the paint, which is sort of a bonus using this technique. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you've ever thought about masking your laser materials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more tutorials coming soon. Stay tuned.